Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Robbins, and welcome to Life, Death, and the Space Between. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you all a very personal journey of my own that I've been on over the past really three years, as I three to four years, as I sort of look back at it all. But uh, I wanted to share with you kind of where I have been, where I'm going, and what got me here, where I am today, with some big news for me, certainly personally, but hopefully to inspire you as well, because I think you know on this podcast I share a lot through the sharing of others, through when other people share their stories. I try to tie in my own anecdotes to it. Um, but I never share much about kind of my journey, my experience. And and there's a big reason for that. A big reason is that some of my patients listen to this podcast. And so um, I, I am very conscious of wanting to kind of protect them, protect how they know me, protect how they see me. But I believe that I can share today as an opportunity to inspire you, uh, hopefully to understand better what a real spiritual journey looks like, because I think that we often think that spiritual journey or spiritual enlightenment is kind of these one strike moments in time where we, you know, angels drop in and start singing to us. And uh, that's very much not the case. So I'm going to kind of go back for you to the beginning for me, which was, as many of you know, when my aunt died and um, I had what was really probably a spiritual emergency at the time that I now know and went into therapy and was working through through a therapist for on and off for 17 years. I had a couple different therapists during those times, all because they left for different reasons. One left for a pregnancy, one retired, um, or one actually moved, and then one retired. And um, did a lot of really deep, meaningful work and grew tremendously in, in that amount of time and am so grateful for the work I, I did. Uh, also, during that time, I had reached out to a woman, a medium. Her name was Dorothy. She has since passed. Interestingly, there's an interesting ghost story to that as well that I should probably share, but haven't yet. I'm not going to share it right now. Um, and Dorothy helped me really develop my mediumship skills. I, I met with her every I think every two weeks or maybe once a month for a couple of years, uh, I would go. She had this amazing place in the West Loop before, if you live in Chicago, before the West Loop was the West Loop. She was an incredibly gifted medium who had been doing this work for a long, long time. And she was, I was introduced to her through the professor at my graduate school who I went to when I had first had my opening, my, my visit from my aunt. And she really steered me in that direction. Over the course of that time, I also took courses in mediumship, shamanic journeying through the Infinity Foundation in Chicago, which has great courses. They bring in incredible speakers with really good mediums and um, uh, sh shaman teachers. And just, it was like a great, I took, I took several courses through them, actually got continuing education credits for it. So that was incredible. Um, and was working with a spiritual psychologist. She wasn't a psychologist, but she was a spiritual coach, I guess, an embodiment coach. You've heard me talk about her before on the podcast. I had her on, Ariana, um, and she actually passed away in July of 2021. And have been kind of on this, are you my mother search? I also shared this in my newsletter of like, where do I fit in this? Not really feeling compelled to go back to traditional therapy because I have all these other experiences and I now know there's, there's more therapists open to it, but there's certainly not enough therapists open to it. So I was feeling really conflicted. Uh, and I tried a couple of energy workers just to try to figure out, okay, where can I go from here? And I know about myself that I'm a huge verbal processor, not surprising that I'm in the field that I'm in, but that is really how I work through. I don't like journaling. Um, meditating is great and it opens me up and then everything kind of drops in and then I know what I need to process. But the actual processing I was really struggling with in terms of who, who could help me for what I needed right now. 
Um, as many of you have heard to have heard me allude to, I've also been very interested in the psychedelic space. This is not an endorsement for the use of psychedelics. However, for me, it has been really helpful in my journey. And I did several psychedelic journeys with several different medicines over the past two and a half, three years, starting in December of 2021. One, I think too. So a lot, a lot of shifts in 2021, kind of putting me on what feels like a new path. Um, many incredible insights came from those journeys. Many incredible downloads. I processed a lot. I felt like I really was able to understand from the inside out how the medicines work, how they help you continue to process stuff and and I'm, I'm a processor. I've processed a lot. I've worked through a lot. Um, but there was still stuff there. And, and I, and I, I've now recognized there will always be. There is no end to this journey for me. It's a continuing opening and a continuing, um, process of really moving towards living in joy, living fearlessly, um, living from a place of an open heart and connectedness. And uh, it, it's a process. It's a process for all of us. And so I want to first like have you recognize that, that you aren't going to take some class. You aren't going to go to have one experience and suddenly, well, maybe you will, but the likelihood is that over this is this is something that happens over the course of of many many years for me it's been 25 at this point um but but it is not over for me and i've i've come to a place where i feel like i'm much more excited about embracing the journey rather than and it sounds so cliche even as i'm saying it but rather than being in a place of like oh this is a destination i have to get to i don't know I, the destination I get to, I guess, is my death in this physical body. And I'm not ready for that yet. But so, so all of that being said, you know, this year really um, felt like a lot. And, and for those of you who don't know me personally, many people know me personally and will reach out and say, I can't believe you do everything you do. Just to give you a little insight into kind of what, what I do beyond just the podcast, because that might be the only capacity in which you know me and but you hear me talking about other things. I have my uh, private practice where I see between 18 and 20 patients a week. I'm the director of mental health at Beyond, which is a holistic wellness club here in Chicago. I have my podcast. I'm a mom of three, a wife, and a daughter, sister, friends to hopefully many. I mean, I hope many people consider me a friend. I consider them a friend. Um, and and really try. Oh, and I'm a, I also serve on the school board at my kids' high school our neighborhood high school. So there's a lot going on here. And then there's the things that I have been aspiring to do. So really working on a book proposal, which has taken me probably a year and a half longer than I anticipated it would, but we are creeping very quickly or slowly, depending on how, how you look at it, towards the finish line, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, obvious, oh, and I think I forgot to mention my podcast in all of this. So obviously my podcast, which feels in so many ways like my fourth child and something I never want to give up. I love my podcast. I hope that comes through when you all listen. Um, and part of why I love it is I love that I get to reach people. And this was my initial intention when I started in 2018. Um, and really when I started planning for it in the summer of 2018 was I wanted to be able to get out of my office and bring some of these teachings and some of these experiences that I had had and uh, that I found were really healing and helpful and bring that to you in a way that felt grounded, in a way that felt like you were part of the conversation, like you could see yourself in this conversation and also have these experiences and maybe open yourself up to different ways of healing, different ways of thinking about healing. I don't think there is one specific way to heal. I think there are many, many ways that you can move towards 
uh, feeling more connected and more whole. And I wanted to expose you to an, uh, an array of different ways to do that. And I know so many of you have done that because you've reached out and you've, you've said you tried this or you tried that and it worked or it didn't work. And that, that's how I navigate my life. There's some things that resonate with me. I said earlier, journaling is not one of them, but for many people, journaling is. So maybe that's a modality. Sound healing is something that has really resonated with me. Breath work has really resonated with me, but maybe that's not the way for you. Maybe yoga is the way for you. Maybe therapy is the way for you. Maybe nature is the way for you. I'm not here to say what that is. I want you to, to look at the menu and pick from it. So my podcast, I feel like, has been super successful in in doing exactly what I intended it to do, which was to reach more people and to help more people. And I am so grateful to every single one of you who listens every week. And I'm so grateful to every single one of you who has shared it. If you haven't, please do, because it helps me. I've never used um, any sort, I've never done any sort of advertising to grow the podcast, although I probably should have, and I'll get to that in a little bit as to why. And it has, it has been completely self-funded. So, and this is not a pitch to give me money or anything. I'll save that for all the other pod, other podcasts where I ask you for that. This is really to let you in on kind of some of what's been going on for me. So in about um, April of this year, I really got clear that I have this course that's been sort of looming in the background. It's a, it, it went through beta huge success. The women who did it, and it was all women, but it just does not have to be, who did it, who participated, loved it. They had great experiences. They had these openings and awakenings. Some people got off their medication. Some people stopped using um, substances that they were using to, and were better able to deal with their emotions. And it was interesting because that was not at all the intent of the course. I didn't know what the impacts were going to be or how people were going to integrate what they learned in the course into their lives. Some people opened up and they were more in touch with loved ones who had passed um, and really using signs and synchronicities to navigate their life in a different way. So it really ran the spectrum of... Um, of, of healing. And I've been sitting with this course for so long. And every time I go back to it, I think this is incredible. And there's so much there, but I haven't had the chance to really put it out into the world. And part of the reason for that is because I have been so engaged in everything else in my life, which is wonderful. And I've also been uh, sort of unknowingly, but, but also I don't want to say unknowingly, maybe not really consciously thinking about my intention in terms of why I was doing everything I was doing, the sound healings, the psychedelic healings, breath work, um, you know, just generally talking to people. But as part of that, I realized that I was continuing to heal and to be exposed and to be thinking about what I want my life to continue to look like. And so in April, when I started working with a marketing um, person to help me a little bit more, what I got really clear on was that I just didn't have the time and space to do this other piece of work that I've really been wanting to do. And I, this was a really hard process for me because I like to think that Everything will just happen in time and everything will just work out. But when you don't have time or when you I don't even like to say when I don't have time because we choose. I do believe we choose and create um, how we spend the time in our day. And I just couldn't find the space to make that a, a real priority for me. And it, it's not because I haven't wanted to, it's just because of the space and time that it requires. It needs that I, it means that I would need to step back from other things. So I was finding myself really needing to think about how I'm utilizing my time and how I really want to be utilizing my time. And what started to become clearer and clearer to me was one, I was feeling further and further away from my spiritual practices. So my own meditation, my own connecting with spirit. And part of that is just the craziness of, of being a mom of three and working and doing all the things. And part of it was that I, 
I don't know. I think that that was really, um, it, it fell out of my priority list. And as a result of that, I was feeling really disconnected from myself. And so I reached out to the woman who I say, who I blame, who put me on this path, um, my old professor. And she has been, she is such a gift to me. She's always been such a gift to me. And she was the professor that in graduate school, I talk about this in an upcoming podcast, but everybody was afraid of because she was so tough, but so incredibly smart. And I reached out to her and within minutes, she was able to kind of pinpoint and mirror back to me exactly what I needed. And um, which which was this. I am taking the entire summer off. I am stepping back from my patients. I'm stepping back from all clinical work that I've been doing. And what I keep saying, and I think is a really great metaphor for how I'm feeling is like, I feel like I was a kid in the candy store and I ate all the candy in the spiritual space, literally like every piece of spiritual candy you could eat. And I feel like I was going to, I felt like I was going to puke. And so what I am now doing is taking a step back and seeing what candy it is that I want to eat moving forward and what candy it is that I need to put to the side. And a big, a big part of this too, the other metaphor that I've been using is I feel like I'm allowing myself, I'm like, I'm like red wine here and I am allowing myself the opportunity. I'm decantering myself. That's what I've been saying. I'm decantering myself. I'm allowing myself the opportunity to breathe because like wine, right? When you pour wine into, I'm not even a wine drinker, but when you pour wine into a decanter, it gives it space to breathe. So it tastes better. And I feel like that's what I need right now is to step back, to give myself the space to really get, go back inside. And I'm lucky that my kids are going to be away this summer. So it gives me real time for myself, which is very difficult for so many of us to do. I completely, completely get that. And, um, but I think so important and I always pride myself. I've in, in my clinical work, in my spiritual work that if I'm in my, in my board work, um, in the work that I do in my neighborhood, in the community, on the school board, if I'm going to talk the talk, then I better walk the walk. And I think that there's nothing worse. I always felt like if my patients saw me outside with one of my kids or um, in the store, wherever it was, I wanted them to feel like the person that was sitting in front of them in the office was the same person they saw anywhere else. Because I feel like if that is not the case, it kind of blows the whole program up, right? It just feels like it is completely inauthentic, like you are saying one thing but doing another. And I think that there's really nothing worse than feeling like maybe you're learning from someone who isn't really, really walking the walk and really practicing what they preach. And so I am taking a step back. There will still be podcasts all summer because, of course, they've been pre-recorded through September. I'm going to be working this summer, and I'm going to be working on the things that I am not able to work on while I'm working on the other stuff that I'm working, seeing patients, doing intakes, all of that, because I want to be able to think creatively. I want to be able to get my creative juices flowing without interruption. For those of you who have kids, I know you know that even though the day might end around six when, when work ends, like my days typically end around three when my kids either come home or they're you know, texting me in between my patients or whatever it is because they need me. So this is really going to give me the opportunity. And, and I have given myself the permission to do this. And I, again, I'm not saying it was easy. It took some processing and working through a lot, but I'm very, very excited for what's to come and what's to come as a result of this. And I'm also going to be, many of you probably heard me interview Linda Nicholas a few weeks ago and there was something about my experience with her that really resonated with me. And so I'm going to also be working with her over the course of the next, you know, six to eight weeks to really tap back into my spiritual gifts. And I don't, I wouldn't even call them gifts. I don't even like calling that to my own spiritual. I don't even know what to call them. 
to continue to um, open up spiritually. That's what I'm going to say. And really reignite that flame and that fire and get back to that place where I know that I can trust the messages that are coming in and what those messages mean. So I felt I'm excited. I'm, I'm beyond excited. I'm about a week, 10 days away from when it all begins. And it's June 10th right now. I'm hoping this will air this week and then you can all hear the excitement. And I'm just really looking forward to seeing what comes of this experience. I've never done this before. I've, I've only taken off for maternity leave since I started working almost 17 years ago in my clinical practice. So this is going to be very interesting and I will keep you updated on what it feels like and how it goes and what the experience is like to really go inside. That's what this feels like. I'm really going in. So stay tuned. Um, thank you for your time as always and for listening to this. I know, again, it's not, us- it's not usual for me to go on and do a however long this is, 25 minutes solo episode, but I felt like this was really important to share. And I really wanted it to, I really wanted to share it with all of you because you have all been such supporters on, on this journey. You have all shared with me experiences that you've had, openings that you've had. And I just wanted to share that with you and for you to be able to be a part of my journey, to understand what this process looks like for me. I'm one person, but this is what this process looks like for me. And that to encourage you that it's an ongoing process and it can look different for everybody, but stay engaged in the process. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Wondering what comes next and what it all means? Head over to Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Also, if you could take a minute to rate and review my podcast, I would really appreciate it. Stay tuned as we continue to explore life, death, and the space between.